the ultimate dream of every scientist, to solve the mysteries of the universe. If it hadn't been for the world's most famous physicist, we would still be in the dark about so many things. With his general theory of relativity, Albert Einstein was effectively the first person to develop a theory about gravitational waves. Gravitational waves are ripples in space-time caused by powerful cosmic events. It took another hundred years before we could actually detect the first signals directly. He never expected that experimental research would ever be advanced enough to detect this on Earth. And these men at the Albert Einstein Institute in Hanover played a major role in this. New technologies for detectors all over the world are being developed here. Henning Fallbruch, head of Squeezed Light Research Group at the Institute for Gravitational Physics at Leibniz University, Hannover. I am Hartmut Grote. I am an experimental physicist and professor at Cardiff University. My name is Benno Wilke, head of the Squeezed Laser Light Research Group here at the Institute of Gravitational Physics. The first gravitational wave signals were detected by LIGO, two gravitational wave detectors located in the US. The laser, the very heart of the detector, was built in Hanover. This is where we developed the high-performance laser for the gravitational wave detectors that measured the first gravitational waves. These lasers have to be extremely powerful, have exceptionally high stability and very high reliability. And this combination in this way exists nowhere else in the world, so that we can quite rightly say that our lasers are the most stable in the world. Years of basic research and development, countless prototypes and a test run that took an entire year. Then the time had come. We popped the champagne after we had shipped the lasers in containers to the US. Then we spent three months installing the lasers with a team of about 10 people. After that, our first test run went smoothly and according to the measurements we had made here in Hanover. And then came the sensation. It happened in 2015. You could say that our laser light was used to really observe the first gravitational wave, followed by the awarding of the Nobel Prize in 2017. An incredible success story made possible by the researchers and developers of this exceptional laser technology. Since then, several gravitational wave detectors in North America, Europe, and Asia have been generating a continuous stream of new data. Humans now have a new instrument to better understand the universe, its formation and evolution. Squeezed light made it possible, a very special laser light. What we are doing here in our squeezed light experiments is advancing into a world of totally different sources of laser light. Squeezed light helps sense cosmic collisions by making the non-measurable measurable after all. Using the squeezing process, we are not working at the high power limit. Instead, manipulating the quantum nature of light. There is the so-called ground state energy, vacuum fluctuations that are all around us. Squeezing means that we are able to manipulate the noise caused by them. We are able to reduce the noise in a variable that we are interested in measuring, making it possible to resolve really faint signals even further, in fact, making them visible. Squeezed light was used to help solve another mystery of cosmology. The first signal we were able to measure was evolved from the merger of two black holes. That was the first evidence of the existence of black holes. 1.3 billion years ago, these black holes were circling one another, even much, much earlier, before they then merged. Try to picture them as objects, each weighing 30 times more than our sun, circling one another at the speed of the spin cycle of a washing machine, moving ever faster until they finally merge into one. Hard to believe. The German GEO 600 gravitational wave detector near Hanover is also used to detect mega events in space. Gravitational waves ripple space-time, causing tiny fluctuations in light fields that are measured here. The interferometer is a device that splits a beam, such as a laser beam, into different paths and then superimposes them. 
This is highly sensitive to minute changes in the lengths of the paths. It is measurement of the difference. We also use this in our laboratory in Cardiff, for example, in our interferometers. Off to Wales. Hartmut Grota has been researching and teaching at the School of Astrophysics at Cardiff University for five years. This is where he goes hunting, for dark matter, among other things. His weapons are the instruments made in Hanover. What we have here is the laser that Benno helped develop. On the other side, we feed in squeezed vacuum, which comes out of this box here that was developed and built by Henning. Basically, this equipment here is like a miniature gravitational wave detector, and we use it for dark matter, but also in the search for the quantization of space-time. We assume that about 80% of our universe is made up of dark matter. But no one actually knows what this strange matter is. We know that dark matter is not made up of the usual elementary particles that we're familiar with. It has to be something new, which is another reason why it's so fascinating. In the history of the formation of the universe, you need this dark matter to explain why the galaxies exist as we see them today. At the very center is the interferometer. In 1887, it proved that luminiferous ether does not exist, leading Einstein to develop his theory of relativity. In 2015, the evidence of gravitational waves and black holes. What's next? It's still a matter of conjecture whether we will find anything. However, if so, it would certainly be sensational and the first hint of how quantum theory and relativity theory can be brought together. One could say the world is looking over our shoulders to see if we will succeed in developing lasers for the next generation of gravitational wave detectors which are able to detect a lot more of them. If so, gravitational waves will become a daily occurrence. There are still so many cosmic puzzles to solve, but all in good time. Gravity, saw that? Boom, got it.